um, you know, most of the migrant workers keep coming up and they're working at the carnivals. And, you know, the, um, the, the topic that we're exploring, um, the lens that we're seeing it through is the American carnival, but it's important sort of to keep in mind that the H2B visa is used by several other industries as well. It's used by the uh, seafood industry, the timber industry, the hotel industry. Um, and, you know, a lot, a lot of them come up. And I think in terms of, of a solution, I think what Miguel and I were so um, intrigued by was that there's a lot of mutual interest um, that kind of comes from, from both sides of this H2B debate. I think there's a lot more um, similarities of what people want than dissimilarities. I think everybody wants transparency in the H2B. Um, and I think both sides want the system to work. It's just... Right now, um, when legal migrants try to come up here, it, it, it's extremely difficult for both sides, for the, for the migrants and for the, uh, for the industries. And so, you know, I think, I think a lot of policymakers just need to sort of take a look at that and uh, see what they can do about it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an important differentiation, and I'm glad you brought it up. You know, we wanted to raise awareness in our film about legal migrant workers. Most documentaries or stories that Miguel and I have read, um, you generally deal with illegal immigration. And, uh, you know, we sort of wanted to shine a little bit of a spotlight on the fact that there's thousands and thousands of uh, legal migrant workers who are coming up here and they're trying to work within the confines of, of the law. And similarly, there's, there's a lot of um, industries that are trying to do the same thing where, frankly, it would be easier for them to go out and hire illegal immigrants. Um, so, yeah, I mean, people, people have tried to stop guest worker programs. Um, it's more the case that people have tried to um, change the way they work, um, and that's been tricky because, you know, the way it works right now is policymakers really only have, um, they only hear from, uh, from the industries a lot of the times, so it's sort of a one-sided argument. Um, obviously, migrant workers uh, are not American citizens, so they don't vote. Um, and so, you know, a good argument could be made that these legislators are listening to the people they're supposed to be listening to, who are, who are people who vote, they're constituents, but there might be, you know, uh, a human rights component to all of this as well, and we just kind of wanted to throw all that out there in as neutral of a way as possible. Um, we found that the vast majority of them do not jump ship. They, the reason they're coming up, you know, uh, through these visas is because they want to abide by the rules of the law. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, most of them come back down. In the case of the carnival, you know, they, they usually come up here for seven to eight months, and then they go back down to spend time with their families. Um, you know, but, but, but you, you bring up a really, a point that we were also very interested in, which is the family aspect of it, and that everybody in the film sort of had a common theme, which was survival. You know, the, the, the workers, the migrant workers who were coming up, were coming up to help the survival of their families, to better their families. And similarly, the carnival owners were doing the same thing. They, you know, they're, they're just trying to survive as well. A lot of these carnival owners were fourth, fifth generation uh, guys and, and girls who, who don't know anything more than, you know, to to uh, run carnivals, and, and none of, we found that none of them are, you know, really living off the fat of the land, they're, they're, not, they're not millionaires, uh, they're really just doing the best they can. I don't think it's a pleasant job either, but, um, you, I mean, it's a great question, you know, Miguel and I have definitely tried to put ourselves in the shoes of everybody in the film, um, you know, to, to sort of humanize uh, everybody that we were speaking to. Um, and I think a lot of them have very difficult uh, paths, you know, difficult choices. Um, uh, really, a lot of these migrant workers, we were there. I mean, we were, we were out in the orange fields with them. It's, that's grueling labor, and they get paid $4 a day. It's crazy. Um, so I, I understand why they, why they come up, um, just because, you know, the, the labor that they have up here pays so much more money. I get it. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, those, those are tough choices that, that, that they have to make. And I mean, uh, I feel, uh, you know, it, it's, it makes you um, feel very fortunate that you, you don't have to do that. You know? you know, what I found was the, 
one of the main reasons the carnival owners wanted to use legal migrant workers um, is because they, they have to stay up more or less for the duration of the carnival season. And that gives them a skill set that I think a lot of workers in the past who were domestic workers just didn't have by default of them sticking around. You know, a lot of these migrant workers come up year after year and they work the same carnivals. So you'll have, you'll have guys, and we saw this, you'll have guys that have, that have been there for five or six years in a row. And, you know, they've developed a real expertise on not only how to safely assemble and disassemble and, and operate the rides, but also, um, you know, how to do it quickly. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a definite advantage for these carnival owners in terms of safety, I would say, that they bring these workers back because the alternative uh, oftentimes has been they'll hire domestic workers and they'll leave after two weeks. And then you really do have a safety concern there where you're dealing with people who, um, who really shouldn't have any business trying to assemble those rides. Um, the, the problem here, though, if you want to look at the other side of it, is um, the, the component that keeps these workers up is, in a lot of people's eyes, problematic. The idea of what's called portability, where a uh, migrant worker who comes up can't really leave. You know, and so that that puts a lot of people say that puts a lot of um, it gives gives the uh, the industries a lot of power. You know, because uh, if you're an unscrupulous carnival owner or or owner of seafood or timber or hotels, you know you could exploit that. Um, most of the people, most of the owners we explored and looked at were very scrupulous people, but but that gap exists and and. And um, you know, hopefully, maybe some regulations will will, will come out there uh, to sort of protect workers when they're in situations with unscrupulous owners. They don't. They don't personally have tests that they have to complete. But what happens is, um, in in every single every single time they park their carnival uh, and set everything up, there's a safety crew from the state or from the town that comes to inspect the rides. So. Um, that's how they sort of ensure safety, and and um, you know a lot of the carnival owners we spoke to. That's that's a very um, convoluted process. You know, every single time they move, having to um, having to deal with with regulations, people coming out. But obviously, it's for the best interest of of, of the public. Yeah, you know, the, the circus and the carnival are actually two very they're lumped together. Obviously, right? Because there's they're both outdoor amusement. But um, most of these carnivals don't really compete with the circus. They're, uh, in the public's interest, two different forms of entertainment. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't found that, that, that entertainment properties like Barnum and Bailey um, are wiping out carnivals. There are big carnivals out there that, that I've, I've heard smaller carnival owners complain about. Um, you know, it, it's sort of a turf war kind of thing where most of these carnivals operate within regions of the United States um, and you know I've heard complaints that, that there's two or three bigger carnival carnivals out there and they'll try to sort of you know impinge upon uh, these smaller carnivals turf but that's really all I've seen um it could be considered a problem yeah I, I um, we, we we did notice that most of the most of the legal migrant workers we we spoke to um, did not know English well. Um, most knew enough to get by, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think you you bring up a concern that could be that could definitely be an issue. I guess it's 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 a very it's very tricky, you know, on both sides of it. I think that the um, I have a lot of respect for for both sides in in a lot of different ways because everyone's just trying to figure out the best way to survive.